So as we're going through the mistakes, any mistakes on yours, get another sheet of paper, write it off to the side, whatever, so that you don't make the same mistakes on the test. So starting with the first section, you had to solve these by taking the square roots. So one, if you didn't show that you took the square root, you missed points because that's the whole point of this. So for one, the only thing you need to do solving why was take the square root of both sides. Make sure you're doing it to both sides, not just one. That would give you plus or minus four. Some of you jumped right into the answer with that, which was fine, as long as you had to the bracket and had both plus or minus. Um, if you didn't put plus or minus, you basically missed half of the answer because you're missing the other half. All right, questions on one. Two. Isolate the n squared, get rid of the four. Take the square root of both sides. Some of you got this, some of you did not. Some of you put plus or minus zero, which you didn't need to, there's no such thing. Um, but some of you saw that it was zero and put no solution, that was not the answer. Zero would be an answer. Questions on that one. Three, um, I don't think this happened now in this class. Some of you divided by four and then took the square root that can work, but you got lucky that it worked um, because that won't always work. So divide both sides by four, then take the square root. So plus or minus two was your answer there. Some of you got four, and I think we either forgot to take the square root or something happened there. Be careful. Questions on three. Four, get rid of the six. Divide both sides by 64. Take the square root of both sides. And put your final answer in code brackets. So as long as you're isolating, taking the square root of both sides, putting your final answer in curly brackets, you should be fine. But if at any point you're missing any of those steps, you start to lose. So each one was one point for the work, one point for the answer. Questions on four or any of these in general? So, say that one more time. Divide. Divide. Take the square root. Put your answer in the brackets. Oh, no. I said if you took the square root first. Oh, okay. You got lucky. Thank you. Okay. This was objective three. And this, you just had to, had to find the solutions, write them as ordered pairs, or if there were none, write no So there were two for this one I got negative three zero and one zero. As long as you didn't switch the order, you made sure you had the right numbers, you got both of those points. If you start putting things that were not the solution, then you got minus ones. It was only one, four, six, and that was at four, zero. There were two, four, seven at negative four and at positive four. And then there were two for eight, negative five, and negative one. Questions on any of those? Okay. 
As long as you can recognize what the solutions are, be able to write them as ordered pairs in the correct order, you should be fine here. Yeah. Um, it has to be number first, then zero. It can't be zero than the other. Okay. Then objective two. So you may see that. Yes. It has to be one to one. Correct. It has to be the quadratic, the parabola has to cross the x axis. If it doesn't, then it's no solution. The um, objective three, you'll see that I change the points because as I was looking at the directions, I was like, these points don't match these directions. Um, so you have to do a few things, and it doesn't say that there. Um, graph it, write the solutions as coordinates or order pairs, but also state how you find the vertex, not what is the vertex. Um, so when you're doing that, you can either, if you did it in the graph or the table on the calculator, whether you said in table, in graph, that was fine, but make sure you write that for each one. If you did it algebraically, then I obviously saw that you did that. Okay. Um, okay. I will start to do each one algebraically. I'll show the table, um, and that would have matched the same table, and then I'll plot the points and write the solutions. So if you were doing nine algebraically, which is not what you have to do, but you would do x equals negative b over 2a, and start to simplify. And even on my own key, I found the first part algebraically, but then did the rest of the table. Okay. Um, if you found it from the table, you don't. Some people did, and that was fine. Um, either or works. If you just looked at the graph and found the points from there, that's also fine. You just have to say that. The only reason I'm writing the table now is so you know which points graph or should have been graphed. Remember that the instructions are on the board. So if you forget how to graph it, how to look at the table to find the vertex, the directions are there. Remember also that your points should mirror each other. So if your vertex is here, this point should match this point. It shouldn't be like off. This point should match this point. Make sure your graphs have arrows. And then your two solutions were three, zero, and five, zero. That one was actually supposed to be worth four points. The two solutions, the graph, and however you showed me how you find your vertex. Vertically, the graph, the table, whatever. So to get this, I put this in and look at what X is on the table. So really, I didn't need to do this because I could have found the point in the middle. 10, I'm going to do the same thing. This would be negative six. So if you did this algebraically, 
Don't forget to see negatives. It will change your answer. So then the five points you should have had graphs, should have looked like this. It does not cross the x axis at all, so your solution was none. You said. Use table, found table, something about the table, and that's fine. How did we get it? If you put this in white equals, I can go a second. Number. 11. Negative four over two times negative two. So then the table looks something like this. This again did not cross the x axis, so no solution. So both 10 and 11 were worth three points. And then 12. One zero three. And you would have had two solutions at one zero and five zero. What questions do we have on any of these four, Taylor? Go back up to my group. Yes, give me one second. Seven, six, four, two, eight, one, two. Christina. Yeah, so you don't have to do the algebraic part. You can just do the table or graph. You can get the same table by doing it that way. Then the last section. So there's a lot of steps. I'm going to try to go fast, but also answer any questions you have. Points. Your formula is up here, so don't try to memorize. It's up there. Use it. The very first thing you should have done is label your A, B, and C in this box without the variable. So one, negative, eight, sixteen. If you put the variable, that was wrong for each part you did that for. Make sure you have your x equals or n equals or a equals on the outside for every step of the way. And then you would everything in this. So negative, negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 
negative eight squared. Some of you made this positive, that was fine. Some of you went ahead and made this 64, that was also fine. Those skipping steps are fine. And that's 16. When you're doing the fraction part, make sure all of this, except for the x equals, is over two times a, not just the square root part. That was throwing some of you off. And then start to simplify. So 64 minus 64 is what you should have gotten, which gives you zero. This one, and it was negative, negative. Because a negative times a negative is a positive. Negative eight being squared. After this, separate. These would end up being the same thing. I'm sorry. Because the eight is not changing. This part is not necessary if you did it in the calculator. But you should only get one answer here, not plus or minus, because they give you the exact same thing. So no repeats, final answer, and curly brackets. So your six points were, did you label your ABC correctly? Did you set it up correctly? Did you simplify? Um, did you simplify to get whatever inside the square root and show how you got that? After you took the square root, did you show how you got that? Did you separate? Did you get the final answer? Questions on 13. We'll start 14. Same process. This should be 2, 11, negative 76. So n, or if you put x, that was fine. N equals negative 11 plus or minus the square root of 11 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 76 all over 2 times 2. And then negative 11 plus or minus 121 plus 608 is the number you should have gotten there. Over four. N equals negative 11 plus or minus 729, which happens to be a perfect square. If you're not sure, always do it in your calculator. That was 27. Separate them. And figure out what those two are. You could do them in separate steps, all the same step after you separated. But you should have gotten negative 19 over two or negative 9.5 and positive four. Your answer should be least to greatest. What questions did you have on this? If you put this in the calculator, sorry, I would put it in as a fraction. You should get that. 
Uh -huh, you're gonna have Fifteen, same process. Two, negative one, negative three, and equals negative negative one plus or minus square root of negative one squared minus four times two times negative three all over two times two. And equals positive one plus or minus one plus eight times three twenty four. So we should have gotten twenty five underneath the square root. Double check your math because some of you are getting negatives in that first spot. I think because you of the way you're putting it in the calculator. But make sure you're putting it in as parentheses squared on the outside, not as parentheses or not as this, this which is squared on the inside. See how you get two different things. So then we have I. You would separate them into two, one minus five, one. And you would get your two answers after you simplified negative one and three over three. Or negative one and 1.5, either one. Questions on that one. Alpha y equals. Then the last one. A is one, B is negative five, C is negative six. So A equals. Uh, negative negative five plus or minus square root of negative five squared minus four times one times negative six all over two times one. Five plus or minus twenty five. This becomes a positive twenty four. All of the two. Add those together. Forty nine was a perfect square. So you could separate. And then your final two answers were negative one and six. What questions do we have there? If you did it to like, if this problem said 50 instead of 49, making this up, which is not the actual answer. If we went to a perfect square, you would still separate it, but that would be your answer as you separate it. Five minus the square root of 50 over two, and five plus. If you want to use the decimals instead of this, you have to put this entire piece five minus the square root of 50 all over two, five plus the square root of 50 over two, two separate things. 
But I would say just leave it like this. So you don't have to worry about the dark music if you get something. Other last minute general specific questions. Put your phones in a calculator pocket, grab a calculator. If you have a snap lock, take it off. Thank you. 